Hello and welcome to part 2 of the Python for Finance tutorial series and in this one we're going to do some basic visualization. Um, the data that we're going to use is the data that we downloaded in the previous tutorial. So let's get started. I'm going to copy the code from the previous tutorial. We are not going to download data now but maybe later on uh, in another tutorial. And we're going to import pandas as pd. So this is actually the library that would help us to read files. So our data would be equal to pd.read underscore csv. In the brackets first we're going to specify the file name. So for this tutorial I'm going to start with amzn, so amazon.csv. Then I'm going to make sure that we parse dates um, as well. So parse dates would be equal to true, so we would have them as the same format that we had before. And index call would be equal to date. Now this is something that you can set later on as well, but I prefer to do it in one go. So let's make sure that our data is correctly imported. So what we expect is basically the six columns um, to appear. Then there we go. Now, the next part of this tutorial, what I would like to do is to have this adjusted close as a line chart so we can see how the stock price changed during this period that we have and below it a separate bar chart that contains information about the trading volume. Now the way we need to do that is um, we need to create two separate charts and we're going to import matplotlib.py plot as plt. So this is what we're going to use to create or let's maybe the more correct word is to visualize. And we're also going to actually let's start with that. So we have we would have ax1 or our first axis would show the image or the line chart only related to the price and the ax2 would be our second part which is only related to the volume. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we use plt.subplot to grid. Now what this means is we create first the grid which would be in this example seven rows one column. So we have seven rows and one column that we can use to fill these charts and bars and graphs and all kinds of visualizing um, ways. So this first one would start at zero, zero. So our zero row and zero column would be the starting point and row span would be equal to four. So it would start from zero, it would go zero, one, two, and three. So that part of our entire grid is reserved in a way for our first axis. The call span would be equal to one because well, we only have one column. And let's add, add a title which would be equal to Amazon, at least for now, maybe later on we'll change it. And plt.subplot to grid for the second one. So part of it would be the same, so it would be the same seven by one grid that we have, uh, plt.subplot to grid in the background. Now we can start, basically we have zero, one, two, and three already taken. So the earliest we can start is four, zero, and then row span to be equal to three. So that's the maximum row span. And call span would be equal to one. What we can also add is share x to be equal to ax1, which means that the x axis would be shared between the two. So if we zoom in on one chart, the other one would automatically update as well. Now, this is how you would create, but I personally prefer to leave one row in between the two and we'll see later on why that might be a good idea. Um, for now, we're going to stay with this just to make sure to, to see also why it won't work. Uh, and now once we have the axis, let's use our data to populate them. So ax1.plot, what we're going to plot on this one is data adjusted close. So from our data, our Amazon data, we're going to use the adjusted close and the label, well, that's our price. On ax2, we're going to create a bar chart. Um, first, we're going to have the index, which is the date. So that's our x axis and the y axis would be the volume. So let's also add the label. That's our the volume of the stock. Um, all right, so maybe it's good to show the legend as well since we have labels. So ax1 and ax2.legend. 
and we can just use plt.cho to see well maybe we get some error as well but this is our initial um, line chart and bar chart but we are going to make some adjustments to that as we go now this is how it looks like initially let's see what's good and what's not so good we, we do have the price correctly shown we do have a, a nice bar chart for the volume and we don't have enough space between the two so we can't really see what this x-axis shows so that's one thing that's missing and that's why i prefer having that that row empty not having data in there and also this x-axis shows 2020-01 then 2020-02 and then there's part even overlapping so it seems to be the month but it's not quite well shown so let's let's make a few adjustments first i'm going to make sure that we have some extra row in between so first one we have in spamming spanning over four rows the second one would be over two rows starting from row five so it would be actually five and six right in in python terms um it goes up to but not including seven so it starts from counting from zero so now we solved one small part let's see how that looks like and then maybe that's better to, to solve it one by one just to see the difference with every change that we make all right so now we do see the x-axis it doesn't look good it still doesn't look good but it looks at least we do see the x-axis of, of the line chart now um, i personally like to use a different style so uh, from matplotlib you can import style and it just well it's quite explanatory self-explanatory just using a different style so the style that i'm going to use for this tutorial is ggplot um, and I'm also going to add link in the description where you can see the other styles that you can use and maybe there's some other one that you prefer more than other and Basically, you will see the difference just by adding this one line to your code that the whole The, the way it looks is just completely different We still do have this issue that we need to solve when it comes to the x-axis and that's what we'll tackle next um, So how we're going to do that what we need to import is actually matplotlib.dates as m dates and this is something that will help us to format in a way the dates that we see on our x-axis um, so what we're going to do is maybe for the legend plt.gca.xaxis.set major formatter and then in the brackets we have mdates.date formatter and here we need to specify the order that we want to see so maybe if we want to have the year it would be percentage sign y for year percentage sign m for months and then i use a dash just so these uh, numbers are separated in between and then percentage sign d for they so this would be uh, the, the long form maybe uh, in this case um, since it's only 2020 so we have 1st of january until 7th of september 2020 i think the year is something that we can add into the title so maybe instead of having amazon it would be amazon dash 2020 and then here we don't need to display the year it could be just month and date now, if you want to to add maybe the, a label you can also do that maybe you can just do that just i think that would be good if we have uh, ax2.setxlabel and then we can have date month day basically that's what our x label is and i'm going to just include it on on the second axis because it's the one that's lowest positioned let's see how this looks like now at least it should look much better than than what we had before or maybe we get some error as well all right so we have first of january then we have february second then we have march second april second uh second first it's all the first of course so february first march first april first and so on and here we have some information of what that means um i think that looks much better already if you want to zoom in into any of these let's say a specific period so maybe you want to see this 
a period of a bit of higher volatility, you can just select that part and it would automatically update for both the line chart and the bar chart, regardless of whether you zoom in on one or the other. Um, that's the that's why we had that share X included in our code. Um, I think this is this is quite good for this tutorial. Maybe one thing that I would like to cover is if you want to store this into a um, let's say into a an image, you can also do that. So instead of showing this, uh, what I'm going to do is plt dot save fig, and in the brackets I'm going to specify let's say Amazon slash or maybe dash twenty twenty dot png and you should have what we just created into a PNG file saved um, on in, in the same folder that we're using for this tutorial. So there we go, that's our image. Um, the, the good part with this is that uh, once you have the code, you can easily change for, for any, um, let's say any company that you want or any or, or cryptocurrency as well. So what we can do still is I'm going to remove this image because we are not going to use it anymore, but I'm going to combine these two tutorials that we had the first one and this one. Um, I'm going to show it. I'm not going to save it again. Uh, I'm going to have, let's see, my data would not be equal to reading it from an Excel file. So I'm going to comment this part out. It's going to be, let's say this cryptocurrency, so Bitcoin in US dollars. So that would be my data set. And what I'm going to do is, so I don't need the tickers, but it doesn't make any difference. Um, I'm going to just use this one. So data would be equal to web data reader. So this is the, the one, the part that I need. So I'm going to just use this. I'm going to comment this part out just so we, we use this. So what we have is we have starting point of our data set. We have the ending point. We have uh, the cryptocurrency that we want. We're going to use this data. I'm going to just make some space here. Um, we're going to use that one using the Yahoo service for the start and end point. It would apparent, it would just uh, create the same thing that we did for Amazon, except now this would be, let's say, Bitcoin to 2020. And maybe here it's Bitcoin slash USD. So it's in, in US dollars. And then for the rest, it should be quite good. And if we do this, uh, we would have both kind of both tutorials combined into one. So it would get the data from Yahoo. It would create this um, nice line chart um, as well as the bar chart for the, for the volume. So um, this is how you would use it. And basically with just by changing piece of the code, um, you get, you get this, uh, quite functional for any currency, every any cryptocurrency or any stock that you want. And you probably can do the same for, for any foreign exchange uh, rate and so on. So that would be all regarding this tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.